Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. With the Facebook transfer, we are transferring the relationship of the patient's maxilla to the patient's center of rotation of the lower jaw. To the articulator and the center of rotation of the articulator. Keep in mind that the face ball transfer has nothing to do with vertical dimension and it has nothing to do with centric relation. The maxilla is treated as a, uh, well you can think of it as a free body. And to transfer a free body in space, we need three, at least three points of reference. And as mentioned before in the lecture, those three points of reference are uh, both condyles, as it rotates around each condyle. And the third point of reference is something in the anterior region uh, that will give us the orientation vertically. Now, the first step in making the face ball transfer is to adapt some object. It can be a separate base plate. It can be the base plate that we use in constructing the complete denture. But make some ad adaptation to the patient's master cast. In this particular case, I'm going to use a regular base plate. Now, there's a certain way to um, add the bite fork to the base plate in complete denture construction. Now, you remember before when we prepared the master cast that we had the uh, trimming done on the top part of the cast so that it ended up parallel. This surface, this plane, was parallel to the wax occlusal rim or the projected um, plane of occlusion or the ridges, residual alveolar ridges. Now this parallelism, uh, parallelism becomes important uh, at this stage of the procedure. This stem of the bite fork is added to the base plate so that the bite fork itself, the stem of the bite fork, is parallel to the top of the cast. In turn, parallel to the projected occlusal plane. Therefore, when we put it on the instrument, on the articulator, we can raise and lower the apparatus until once again it is parallel with the floor and with the top of the articulator. So all you have to keep in mind is everything is parallel. And this actually is our third point of reference, parallelism. Now the baseball transfer can actually be made after the uh, registrations for vertical and centric are completed, or it can be the first thing done uh, in the second patient appointment when we are recording intermaxillary relations. At this time and during in this course, I would suggest that the first thing that you do is mount the upper cast in the instrument with the face ball transfer. Now, as long as we're looking at this master cast, let me point out a, another item. You'll notice I've made rather large notches in the top of the cast. The purpose of these notches, of course, are to key the cast to the mounting. So if this comes off during um, processing or during the fabrication of the denture, they can uh, always be added back very carefully with these large notches. Now these were made simply by uh, of the large white uh, stone on a lathe. And you'll notice that they are V-shaped, no undercuts, and there is no grinding in the middle of the cast because, of course, this is the thinnest portion and we don't want to go through the, through the model. So just uh, three or four notches such as this will key the cast very nicely. And this should be done in the lower model also. Now, let's take a look at our patient. You'll notice that probably most of your mannequins at this time do not have these small um, objects attached to the condylar mechanism, but you do have them in your kit. And they are used for the transfer of the uh, maxillary cast. So the first thing to do 
is to place those little objects in the condor mechanism, which are in perfect alignment with the opening axis of the patient's jaws or of the mannequin. Actually, we should be doing this. We should hold it like this and, and looking at it this way. Now, the first step in the faceball transfer, of course, has been completed. We have adapted carefully the bite fork to the uh, base plate. Now we go into the patient's mouth and carefully place the base plate into the mouth. And at this time, it is important, uh, not in this case particularly in the laboratory, but we have the patient in a certain position. Frankfurt horizontal should be just that. It should be horizontal with the horizon. So we have the patient sitting upright in the chair, and the bite fork uh, comes out from the mouth, again, parallel. And at this time, the rest of the mechanism of the, bite, uh, of the uh, face ball itself is put into place. And you have done this enough time so that we won't go into the mechanism of doing this. I mean, you're going to see an extra pair of hands here for a moment, uh, which belong to one of my colleagues. And I suggest that uh, uh, the rest of you do this too. It really, it's, it's a two-man operation, um, uh, making a face ball registration. And give your, uh, give your neighbor a hand. That's okay. Now you'll remember that the um, centering is important of the face ball. And in this case, it, it just happens, let me turn that around a little bit so you can see here what we're doing. It just happens at about six, 67 millimeters on each side centers the case. And this instrument has been constructed to the configuration of the hand-on instrument, so that it transfers rather easily. On a patient, it's just a little more difficult. Now, you'll see that I am holding the uh, cast on, onto the ridge, and the base plate onto the ridge, because we don't. Uh, we get a in faulty transfer. You can see the movement there. In the patient's mouth, it's the same way. The patient must, either by holding it himself or biting on um, cotton rolls or something, the base plate must be stable in the mouth at this time. Once the face ball is centered onto the markings on the face, or in this case, onto the little studs added to the condylar mechanism, and we are sure that the, uh, or satisfied that the bite uh, fork stem is parallel, then we come forward and actually tighten the mechanism in the anterior region. Let's tighten it the right way. Have a small wrench here that actually gives us a little more leverage. There is one danger, this type of face bowl, that we get some slippage after we take it from the face. And if that happens, of course, the registration is no good. Now, at this time, the transfer has been completed halfway. Now, all we have to do is take it to the instrument. But at this point, the mechanism can be removed from the mouth. And we have the completed face ball transfer. Now, at this time, as I mentioned before, any undue force down on the base plate, particularly when the master cast has been added to it, and there's some weight there, if this swings around the arm of the face ball, then the face ball has to be made again because we lose all of the registration that we've been working for. Now, at this time, uh, let's look at that parallelism of the bite fork again. If we put this onto the instrument, such as this, uh, it would be incorrect. Or say if the bite fork were at an angle such as that. Our third point of reference, remember, is the parallelism of the stem. So we will simply, with the jack on the lower part of the mechanism, raise it up and down until we are satisfied that the bite fork is level. So at this time, let's go to the instrument and mount the upper cast. Now, you know for, uh, from your work before that there is a bend in the stem which will go around the center post. Using this type of instrument, we must maintain the proper uh, dimensions of the instrument with the, with the center post. So make sure that the pin is flush on top of the handout instrument at this time. And once again, we place the 
baseball mechanism into the instrument. And as you see, the stem is not parallel. So using the jack on the bottom of the, uh, of the mechanism itself, I'm going to raise the bite fork so it is indeed parallel. Well, let me make another mix. It's probably going to set on your bed. OK, at this time, I'm satisfied that the um, stem is parallel to the top of the instrument. At this time, I'm going to hold the cast underneath while Dr. Menchinger adds some impression plaster. And don't try to do this all in one step. What I'm doing here is simply making the initial setting, initial mounting of the master cast to the top of the instrument. It can be dressed up at a later date. Let's just find out if our mounting is correct. It's very difficult to do this in one step. I notice that I am holding underneath because in this step it is very easy to put too much force depending on the set of the stone at the time we put it in. It might move the cast down and if that happens we have to start over again. So I, with my finger uh, I am holding the um, stone in place while the initial set of the impression plaster takes place. Now, I suggest using your impression plaster at this stage so you don't have to wait 10 or 15 minutes for the initial setting to take place. And under these hot lights and a fine mix of stone by plaster, impression plaster by Dr. Menchinger, we're just about set. I think I can rotate this around now for you to take a look at everything here. At this point, you can have a good picture of the parallelism of the bite fork stem and the top of the instrument. The handle instrument was made so that the top is parallel to the patient's Frankfurt horizontal. After a couple of moments now, the impression plaster has made a set which is strong enough to take the apparatus apart. So at this time, we no longer need the face bow apparatus. And that can be carefully removed. And we have our transfer of the maxillary cast. Now, just in a quick review, let's look at the patient again. And what we have done with this procedure is we have transferred the relationship of the patient's maxilla to his opening axis of the jaw to the articulator and representation of the patient's maxilla and the opening axis of the articulator. And at this time, again, you can see this has nothing to do with the vertical relationship of the patient's jaws, has nothing to do with horizontal relationship or centric relation. That will be the next step. We have simply moved in space the representation of the patient's maxilla. Now, at this time, we can remove the apparatus the upper ring mounted to the cast, wet it once again, and simply make a new mix of uh, snow white plaster and fill in the remaining areas to uh, dress up and make the mounting stronger and uh, look neater. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.